Welcome to the Orchestral Tours premiere event of 2020. My name's Susie and I'm part of the Orchestral Tours team here in Berlin. Before we announce everything to come in 2021, let's take a quick look back over the last year. 2020 was packed with many highlights for Orchestral Tours. It saw the release of many new collections, including Phoenix Orchestra, Modus Jeff Russo, LA Sessions, Tableau Solo Strings and Vivid Keys by Organic Samples, as well as the start of our Creative Sound Pack series. 2020 was also an important year for Orchestral Tours. It saw the introduction of the sign player, as well as some great collaborations with composers Harry Gregson Williams, Tom Holkenborg, Jeff Russo and Richard Harvey. But today, we're looking towards the future and what we have in store for 2021. And to kick off our premiere event with our very first announcement, please welcome to the stage CEO and founder of Orchestral Tools, Hendrik Schwarzer. Thanks, Susie. The sign player is our most ambitious project. And even without huge changes on the surface, we worked very hard on stability and performance. Thanks for your patience and also thank you for your input and feedback because this really helps us to make the sign player even better. Today, one year later after its release in December last year, Sign is pretty much ready. The reason why we developed Sign is that we want to introduce new features, new innovations, and those are only possible with an entirely new framework. Features like mic merging or the availability of single instruments. We want to go the next step in sampling tech. And therefore we created a foundation built on modern sampling philosophies. Over the past year, we worked very hard and therefore I'm proud to come up with a new technique. This is SPC. SPC stands for Sign Performance Compression. It's an entirely new audio codec that we developed from scratch with Andreas Tell and our friends at Sound Theory. It is specifically designed for super performance sampling streaming and improved compression. For us, this is the next step of innovation. Um, I can show you a little comparison. Um, when we are talking about WAF, it's 100% because it's, there's no compression ongoing. So that's, that's the natural file size. Um, Contacts NCW brought it down to 50 to 60% of the original file size, which is a really great number. When we introduced the sign player last year, we came up with sign arc and we brought it down to 40 to 50% more or less. I mean, it's always based, of course, on the source material, but for the price of a higher performance consumption. And the reason for this is that sign arc is based on the FLAC codec. FLAC is really great, especially when it comes to high compression rates, but it takes rather long time for decoding and rendering. And this is exactly the reason why we decided to develop a new audio codec. SPC is specifically designed for super fast decoding times. And all the decisions that we made are made to ensure the most efficient performance at all time. And even then we got it down to around 35 to 40%, which is an amazing number. This means that the file size will be reduced by 65%. But the way more exciting number is that the decoding time is 100% faster compared to sign arc. It is even faster compared to just reading raw WAV files, which is amazing. And therefore also the CPU consumption is cut by half. The SPC support will be introduced with an update very soon. This update will also include more improvements and small features and uh, we will roll out new content based on the SPC format early next year. So those are the news on the sign player and now I would like to head over to a new collaboration. A collaboration I'm personally very proud of. My name is Sean McMahon and I'm the chair of film scoring at Berkeley College of Music. Berkeley has had a rich history of producing and training successful Hollywood film composers. Names such as Quincy Jones, Howard Shore, and Alan Silvestri all come to mind. Our first film scoring classes date back all the way to the late 1950s. As far as I know, we're the oldest and largest degree-granting film scoring program in the world. 
Our students come from very diverse backgrounds, have incredible talent and musicianship, and they are unbelievably creative. Our students learn how to write for small ensembles, rhythm section and horns, but all the way up to a full orchestra. I strongly believe that a combination of professional tools and amazing musicianship is really the key to create great music and to be successful in the industry. As we guide our students through their journey of becoming innovative, bold and versatile music composers and producers, capable of expressing their powerful voices, using the right tool is definitely crucial. Orchestral Tools is one of the leading sample library developers in the world today, and their libraries are truly the industry standard. I use their libraries all the time in my own work as a composer, and they're some of my favorite tools to reach for in my sequencer. This collaboration with Orchestral Tools came about through a mutual contact between me and Hendrik Schwarzer. In the fall of 2019, this mutual friend of mine, who I actually graduated from Berkeley with back in 2000, um, was in Boston and we had lunch. And he told me, Sean, you need to have orchestral tools in the film scoring curriculum. And I thought about it and my response to him was, you know what, you're absolutely right. Orchestral Tools is compiling a customized library for our curriculum that is tailor-made to our teaching needs. This is really exciting. Having Berkeley, which is the leading institution worldwide in contemporary music education, and Orchestral Tools, which is the company that is pioneering new techniques, new libraries, and new educational tools come together, it's probably the best thing that could happen to our department in Berkeley. This library will enable our students to create professional sounding mock-ups with greater ease than ever before and will become an important part of helping them develop their composition and orchestration skills. These tools are great for our students. They will be able to learn them regardless of their technological skills when they come to Berkeley. I'm thrilled to be part of this collaboration between Berkeley and Orchestral Tools and I'm so excited to introduce this library to our students and to use it in all my classes. I hope that this is just the beginning of many more collaborations with our partners and good friends at Orchestral Tools. Hello, my name is Graham Ball and I'm part of the Orchestral Tools team here in Berlin. So I'm here tonight to talk about this collaboration that you just saw announced in that video. Um, for those of you who maybe don't know, Berklee College of Music is an acclaimed school for all kinds of music learning. They have courses which cover film composition, music production, songwriting, even down to how to succeed and survive in the music industry. Um, they're based in Boston in the US. They have a second campus in Valencia in Spain. And for everybody else, there's Berkeley Online, which is a treasure trove of online music learning resources. So what we're doing with Berkeley is developing together a virtual orchestra that Berkeley can use for their film scoring and music production courses. What Berkeley get with this is a tailor-made educational resource which corresponds exactly to the requirements of these courses. It basically means that all of the students at Berkeley and all of the teachers at Berkeley will be using the exact same instruments. And this makes things a lot easier for everybody. So we're going to roll this out probably fall to 2021, so just in time for the autumn semester. And um, we're going to make it available to students at Berkeley and the faculty at Berkeley for a very heavily discounted price. We'll also roll the orchestra out to the general public, so it's available to you guys too at some point. It might be the same time, we might also do it later, we haven't decided yet. Um, this is all going to happen sort of over the course of 2020 and we want to do some other initiatives with Berkeley too. These could include um, feature videos with some of the outstanding students at Berkeley. It could include some online music learning resources that we put out through orchestral tools. We're very excited about this collaboration. It really is something special and we're really looking forward to working on all this stuff with Berkeley. Now, we want to use this momentum with Berkeley to look at educational topics in general at Orchestral Tools. And perhaps the first and the most important step, starting in January 2021, we want to increase the educational discount to 40%. 
what this means is that if you're studying music as a university, you qualify for a 40% discount on all orchestral tools collections. If you're studying at a private college, you also qualify for the discount. And if you're teaching, you also qualify. Even if you're studying chemistry, but you make music in your free time, you also qualify for the discount. Now, to find out how you qualify and exactly what you need to do, check out the page orchestraltools.com slash edu. All of the instructions on how to register are there, plus any new developments in the Berkeley collaboration and anything else we come up with in the field of education in 2021. Thank you very much. I'll hand you back to Hendrik. Thank you, Graham. I'm really looking forward to this new collaboration with Berkeley College of Music. By the way, what we see here is Teldex. Probably it looks quite familiar to some of you. Since years we are building on one big project, the largest virtual orchestra and one of the best acoustic spaces. And therefore, instead of choosing new rooms and different spaces for different projects, we really try to get as much as we can done in the same room. It's our home. And from the beginning on, when we started with Berlin Woodwinds around 10 years ago, we committed to some standard principles. Principles we still believe in. Therefore, everything is balanced. That means when you play the oboe together with the first violins, the, vo the natural volume relations are like in a real recording scenario. And this is the idea behind the entire thing, because it helps you to create more realistic mock-ups in a shorter time. On the other hand, we recorded everything in situ. That means all the different instruments and sections have their place within the Teldex scoring stage. What we built up over the past is huge. At Teldex, we created 398 instruments and sections. And by the way, just as a little tease, we will come across the 400 tonight. And beside that, we created more than 5,300 articulations. It's an enormous number. And everything, again, in perfect balance to each other and recorded in CTU. And we're not just talking about the Berlin series. There's also the Metropolis Arc series. Junkie XL Brass, which we have recorded together with composer Tom Horkenborg last year. The Time series with the symphonic textures. Modos, which we have created for Star Trek series. The Inspire series and many more, for example, Tableau solo strings. You'll be able to build up your orchestral template step by step with single instruments. That's the idea also behind the sign platform. To not just sell huge packages um, but also to be able to build up your orchestra, your personal orchestra, based on the instruments you really need on a daily basis. And by the way, you can also listen to the countless single instrument demos which we put online. What we've started many years ago, we're now entering a new chapter. And therefore, I'd like to welcome my good friend Jan Leopold, General Manager at Orchestral Tools. Thank you, Hendrik. As Susie said before, 2020 was an amazing year for orchestral tools. We introduced a lot of new series and collections. But do we forget where we come from? Do we forget to build on our tradition? No, we don't. So 2021 will be the year of the Berlin series. With our conversions from contact to the sign player, our customers of the Berlin series can finally take advantage of the improved workflows and flexibilities of the sign player. And we also did some new recordings. Why? Because we listen to our customers and we always try to fulfill their needs as best as we can. Some said Berlin brass is not loud enough. So we went back to the Telex scoring stage to record a new double fortissimo layer for the instruments of Berlin brass. It will be included in the sign update of Berlin Brass and will be for free for all existing users. For all the conversions that we do from contact to sign, we will make sure that the updates are improvements for our customers with little tweakings and polishing where it's needed. And we will also give our best to convert as many as possible of the Berlin series additional collections to sign next year in 2021. So now I was talking a lot about uh, the collections that you might already know, right? 
So, but as 2021 is the year of the Berlin series, wouldn't it be nice to add something new to it? Please enjoy the following trailer. We are very proud to announce and release the Berlin Symphonic Strings today. Berlin Symphonic Strings offer an amazing degree of detail, expression and technical refinements. There are very large section sizes. We offer 18 first violins, 16 second violins, 14 violas, the incredible sound of 12 celli playing together and 8 basses. As we recorded them in the Teldex scoring stage with the principles that we believe in, they fit perfectly to the Berlin series, the Metropolis series, the Time series, and also to Chunky Xai Brass, for example. And they will also be a great addition to the Berlin strings. They won't replace them. They are a great addition because the section sizes are totally different. The Berlin Symphonic Strings required a lot of testing and developing up front. So now we come up with three new approaches. The melodic legato transitions were captured within a musical context. The transitions are way longer in comparison to normal legato transitions to reach a much higher level of expression. The pattern legato has three transition round robins to create absolutely realistic sounding ostinato figures. It's perfect for TV and underscoring. And the third approach is called the rapid legato. And this is the one that you choose if you want to play absolutely fantastic sounding playable runs. So let's have a look at the pricing. The normal price will be 549 euro. As an introduction offer, we offer the library for 399 euro. And the best price we can give this time is for our existing users of Berlin Strings. You will have the possibility to get the library for just 299 euro. So I'm sure now you want to hear something. So let me hand over to Hendrik, who will give you a demonstration of the sound of Berlin Symphonic Strings. Enjoy. Thank you, Jan. So um, Berlin Symphonic Strings is really a special collection for me because we did so much testing and exploration. And this also reminded me on our very early days when we, when we came up with, with uh, the Orchestra String Runs Library back the days. And um, this time we wanted to come up with three new techniques. Uh, first of all is the melodic legato. And for this melodic legato, we recorded way longer transitions 
and also, and this makes it really special, is that we um, that we put them out of musical context. That means we recorded real melodies and put the different transitions out of those melodies. And this is why the legato um, has a way more musical feel to it. Um, here's a little example of the celli. And um, it really makes such a difference to have those longer transitions and um, also this expression within the melody that we captured. It made it, made it way more easy for us also to, um, to make the um, direction during the recording session because it's a difference if you just have a technical uh, legato approach where you have the different intervals instead of really recording melodies. And here's also a little demo um, which we have made with, uh, with the entire string section and the melodic legato. So you can really hear the kind of expression that we that we put into um, into this uh, those legato patches. And the second approach, where we really put a lot of time into it, was the pattern legato. And the pattern legato is designed to solve uh, one pain point, and this is if you have those interval patterns that repeat itself all the time, then you always have this kind of machine gun effect when you play it with legato. And those are, in particular, those kind of patterns that you use a lot on TV and underscoring. And um, yeah, we, uh, we recorded through round robin legato to, to face this issue. And also we uh, captured those with extra long legato transitions. Um, here's a little example of the violas. <laughs> So you really hear it's um, it's not repeating itself, or it does not sound like like this typical machine gun effect, and makes it just more natural and fluid. And this was very important to us when we decided to do Berlin symphonic strings to come up with such a technique. And here's also a little demo I'd like to to show you um, in context. <laughs> Maybe some of you remember uh, we had those measure drills uh, in earlier libraries and now you're actually able to play these kind of patterns. Um, another thing that we changed a bit is the rapid legato, which is meant to play fast runs, but not only fast runs, it also uh, helps you for, uh, for vivid and for more kind of agile uh, melody lines. And here's also a little um, demo of this one. Thank you, Hendrik. Such an exciting release. Um, so I just want to welcome Maxi and Zena from Track 15. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Zena, you co-composed the demo for Berlin Symphonic Strings. What was your overall impression of the library? Yeah, so I co-composed the demo with my colleague Franziska Polman, and we knew from the beginning we would like to create something that's very lyrical and very melody heavy. 
Um, so the first thing that struck me when I was playing around with the library is that you can have these long lyrical legato passages uh, and the faster legato runs with the same patch. So while I'm composing, I'm not limited by thinking like I have to have them with different patches and stuff. And I really feel like I'm engaging with the MIDI controller as a musical instrument and not just inputting notes. So I'm there like in the flow with the modulation wheel and expression and it just makes your workflow a lot more musical. Yeah, and the celli and uh, violas sound incredible. Yeah, by the way, it's a uh, it's really, really nice composition that you came up with. And we'll also have a kind of a, a screencast where you explain uh, about the compositional process behind it. Yeah, that's very exciting. So that one will be on our YouTube channel very soon. So keep an eye out. Yeah, by the way, one other thing that you mentioned is um, absolutely right. It's also something we really focused on to combine those three um, approaches with the melodic legato, the pattern legato and the rapid legato into, into something that switches automatically um, uh, based on your playing speed. So um, on one hand, you have this kind of expressiveness and um, those very long transitions if you, if you need them. But on the other hand, if you, if you want to switch over to a very agile uh, yeah. moment, then you can do it on the fly. Yeah, so you can be ornamental and just have long sustained notes and not have to worry about switching between different patches. Yeah, this is one of the many demos we've done with you this year. Um, and they've all been so fantastic, really. But Maxi, I just wanted to ask you about Track 15. If you could explain for those that don't know who Track 15 are and how you guys even met. Yeah, we are Track 15, 11 female composers. And we met to join forces together and make women more visible in this industry. Uh, we met during a workshop in Soundtrack Cologne two years ago. Soundtrack Cologne is a congress for film and media. And yeah, and then we did this workshop together. We didn't know each other at all. We were total strangers and it was a great atmosphere. It was really trustfully. So I didn't have to open up and show what I have achieved. So I, I, could, I, I, I could be really open and tell my difficulties in this industry and my wishes. And so did all the others. And we stayed in contact afterwards, after this workshop and uh, had a WhatsApp group to share experiences and share network, share our knowledge, for example. We educate ourselves with uh, small workshops because we all have different skills mm -hmm. that we can uh, bring into this collective. It's, it's always a safe a number to call you up. Uh, yeah, because, sure. <laughs> because, I mean, this is not something uh, that I just say, because uh, for us, it's um, when, we, when we release such a library, we, we require uh, an audio demo in quite a short time. And mm -hmm. therefore, um, we are very happy to, uh, to work together with composers who really deliver something in a very high quality. And it's always very inspirational, especially the work that you did for Creative Soundpacks. But also, one colleague of you uh, did this demo for Phoenix Orchestra. Yeah, she, it's, it's Yuchun. She, yeah, yeah, she has this great skills uh, with the Asian music market yeah. and Asian yeah. instruments, original instruments. Like classical so Chinese music. She yeah. played in like Chinese orchestra as a kid, so oh, wow. she brought that with her. Well, thank you so much for coming to our premiere event, really, uh, and for being here. It was fantastic to talk with. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting And now we have a very exciting video from our sister company, Scoring Berlin. Let's take a look. You're lying. I, I swear to you, I'm not lying. I'm not, well, I'm, okay, I'm lying a little bit, but I'm a producer. That's what I do. And I will have your money in full, I promise you. You got 72 hours. After that, I choke you to death. The Comeback Trail is a movie, it's sort of a love letter to Hollywood in many ways for me. The story itself is about a washed up, bottom feeding, uh, exploitation film producer portrayed by Robert De Niro. Uh, who's got this dream of making something good, but it's just beyond his grasp. And he owes a tremendous amount of money to a gangster uh, played by Morgan Freeman. He devises a plan to create a movie, heavily insure Tommy Lee Jones, this washed up uh, ex-Western movie star who's now in an old folks home, and kill him in a stunt during shooting. And if they do that, then they can collect $5 million. Duke Montana, if he were alive right now, I know he would be saying, Where's that damn horse at? Duke, 
My, my God, you're alive. We both agreed that the movie was a big, grandiose, old-fashioned kind of nod to filmmaking, and therefore it needed a score to support that idea, you know, something very thematic. Robert De Niro is such a great actor, he could play a murderer and make you like him, you know. We're shooting this fantastic Roper scene. It's gonna be a real killer. Yes, he's plotting a murder, but it's, you know, I'm more worried about him than I am about the guy he's trying to kill because he's he's so inept, you know. But yeah, but you're that, uh, blah, 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 that thing you came up with. The second you hear it, you start giggling. I love it, you know, because I love movies and I particularly like the way a lot of classic films were made and they were driven by themes mm -hmm. whereas today th that is not always the case they're more pads and sounds but I was like we were like no 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 not this movie this movie is old school in your face themes you definitely had your work cut out for you you are perfect for this particular part. I started writing a few themes. Ba 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 boom. Ba 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 boom. Bum bum bum. Ba 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 boom. He brought that to the set. So I went to the Experience set. Experience and... true boredom. Yes. <laughs> and I brought two themes written on the piano, and uh, also the same themes were actually also mocked up with orchestral tool stuff. And I showed George. I said, I have a couple of ideas on set. Here it is. And I played him just the piano themes first. And then right after the bat, I told him, and it's going to sound like this. I was like, don't change a thing, don't change a thing. <laughs> and I was running around with the, uh, playing it for everybody. Exactly. And that's why from the beginning, I had mentioned to you, George, that uh, it's super important where we actually record the score. And when I was writing, I was writing having in mind that I'm going to record in Berlin. Yeah, you mentioned that, yeah. So, so what became apparent to me is that's the room we want to use, Teldec Studio. That's the musicians that I want to use. Even when I was doing the mock-ups, the libraries that I'm using to produce those mock-ups are all orchestral tool stuff, which is samples played by the same musicians in the same room, right. using the same engineer to record it, then using the same conductor to conduct the score, and then mixing it by the same group of people, and then adding on top of this synthestration done by same people that work with the same samples that are provided to me, it was a dream come true. And what made it like an amazing experience is that everybody was invested 200%. It was not just, okay. You could hear it, you could feel it. You know, like the, the room, again, like I, I uh, it's always hard to describe music, you know, describe uh, sounds, but it has a very like immediate or present kind of sound. It's a big sound, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, the pieces are getting lost. It's interesting you're saying that because there is obviously a lot of libraries, that tools that are given to us composers to do things that we have to use in order to get approvals from directors, producers, and so on. Uh, I gravitate toward orchestral tools simply because it's the perfect balance between tone of the instrument and room sound. It's right. not washed out washed out with reverb and long stuff, you cannot, you have yeah, no definition. Yeah, you're right, yeah, it does it's, not. It's uh, very present, it's just enough, clear, you can yeah. hear the performance, yeah. and when the horns play the theme, I want to hear the theme, and when bum, you have the... Bum, 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 <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I, I yeah. know that. I, so, and, bum, 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 bum. and Tom, Tom really, really nailed it, and, and I again... I think I'm in the right key, too. There was a precision to that orchestra that was not in the other orchestras because exactly. we played, we listened to other orchestras exactly. and we were like, look, if it's just string pads or, you know, like long chords, yeah, we could go with that. But no, this was a very precise kind of writing you were doing. You need real musicians to pull that off. 
there was um, a moment when Tom Roosevelt, he called and said, look, I want to meet you in LA. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second here. I had inquired about recording in Berlin and, he, and, and some other places, but he was the only one that said, you know what, I'm going to come to your studio and we got to talk about your score. Mm. And he said, look, you come to Berlin, we're going to do everything we can that, to, to satisfy and to make the score the best sounding we can. And then we had Sasha Noor doing some synthesizations and adding more things to the score and so on. Because obviously, as we were recording, there were some tweaks still being made in the film. Mm -hmm. Editorial stuff and whatnot. Yeah, we were tweaking all the way to the end. <laughs> it was super important that whatever tweaks we were doing after the recordings, there is no telling after that. Because we're using the same samples recorded in the same room again. Right. After we recorded the whole score, uh, I decided to mix in Berlin and not, not take the score back here in LA. And we sat with Tom, I showed up at his studio and he had already done the first pass on the first cue. And I sat down and like blown away because in creating his mixing concept from the discussion we had in the beginning in, the beginning in LA at my studio, when I told him I want this clarity, precision, of every section, not only the mixing was done to perfection, but also the technical side of things. When we had to deal with the with the dub stage and so on, and and as you know, we were doing dubbing in a different country between a lot of people and so on. Tom was the point, the reference point for deliverables, changes, uh, five ones, this, that, stamps, and so on. It was a breeze. Tom was there. Tell me what you need. Just push the button download the link and that you, you know and that everything was done That's so it was great. painless can i ask you a question of course do you really like the process of of all of this absolutely cuz i get excited when i listen to it you know i always think that other people's jobs are more exciting than mine <laughs> i i feel like making a movie i feel like i'm going to track the trailer with no brakes going down a hill <laughs> the whole time and i just don't want to crash and die that's the only thing i could think of and then when it's all done and you look at it, you go, all that pain is gone. That's right. And it's there and it's finished and people laugh in the audience. You go, okay, I get it. What kind of a human being are you? Well, I'm a producer. I mean, we're going back there because I have a movie that needs a big, lush orchestral score, uh, the one about wine country. So Berlin, here we come. Here we come, Berlin. <laughs> So Tom, a fantastic project for Scoring Berlin to be part of this year. But before we dive into the work of Scoring Berlin on the Comeback Trail movie, for those that aren't yet aware of Scoring Berlin, what is Scoring Berlin and the services you offer? Well, Scoring Berlin is a music production service um, founded by Henrik and me back in 2016 uh, with a focus on score recordings and orchestral recordings. So the idea was to create an A to Z service for our customers to realize projects in a fast, efficient, an uncomplicated way uh, because they just have to talk to one person. So we cover the complete production chain starting from the mock-up service, the orchestration, the score preparation, uh, the booking of musicians in the studio, as well as the engineering part like mixing and mastering. And so why would you say Aldo chose Scoring Berlin to record the comeback trail? movie score? So I think he already gave us the answer uh, in the documentary about his experience with Scoring Berlin, but there are also a few points I'd like to mention which might be interesting. I mean, Scoring Berlin is a one-stop shop. Um, our team organizes everything for you and you don't have to worry about anything. So you can do overdubs, for example, in the same session. That means you can layer uh, several passes with the same group of musicians without extra costs and we guarantee the unlimited release of rights of use of the recordings worldwide. That means a buyout. And we provide an orchestra according to the requirements of our clients from expert players from the best top seven Berlin orchestras wow. um, in one of the best sounding rooms worldwide, which is the Teldex Studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these components come together uh, with the direct compatibility of the orchestral tools products uh, recorded in Berlin. So for more information, head to scoringberlin.com. And for now, for the very last announcement of the evening, please welcome back to the stage, Hendrik Schwarzer.
Hey Susi, thank you very much. 2021 will be an amazing year. We have the collaboration with Berkeley College of Music. We'll update the Berlin series to the new science standard. The Forte, the Forte Fortissimo layer for Berlin Brass, which will be free of charge to all Berlin Brass customers. And new inspiring additions to our popular Creative Sound Pack series. Another organic samples product from Maxime, which you already recorded and many new releases on the Sign platform. And there's something we'll start very soon. As a little hint, we are building kind of a new factory. So let's see what it is. I'm happy to announce Sign Factory. Sign Factory is a new subscription service and it will be free of charge. We're building up new factory content for the Sign player. But what is really important to us is we want to create useful stuff. A useful grand piano or a strings hall ensemble which you can use to let your inspiration flow and to kick off a new composition. There will be new releases on a regular basis and we will launch Sign Factory from beginning uh, or early 2021. Thank you, Hendrik. That concludes the Orchestral Tours premiere event of 2020. On behalf of everyone here at Orchestral Tours, I'd like to say thank you for watching. And we hope that you're as excited as we are about all the projects to come in 2021. Stay safe and healthy. Bye for now.